Simon Lindet van Tilburg for Biz News, and I've got Witz Professor at the School of Governance, William Gamedo, with me, and he's also at the Democracy Works Foundation. And today we're talking about the national psyche and why South Africans aren't even more, and I'm going to use an Afrikaans description, why aren't they more demurin about what's going on in the country? Professor Gamedo, um, welcome. And can you tell us what's going on? What's going on with the national psyche at the moment? No, no, thank you for having me. I'm always grateful speaking to you. So it's such, such fun, uh, it's wonderful speaking to you. I think, you know, um, one could actually say that countries um, generally have national psyches. Um, and, and, and the way I would describe the national psyche of the country is, you know, it includes some of the things that um, people feel they have in common. And, you know, and the things that people get angry about and the things which makes people very happy. Um, and so, I mean, one of the things, for example, in South Africa, we love sport. We, um, and we love the diversity of sport. So weekends, you know, sport is an, a really, really big thing, whether it is soccer on the one hand. I mean, um, the interesting thing about soccer, uh, where soccer clubs actually have branches around the country and the branches meet every week and, and people engage, get to know each other. You know, it, it, it really is part of um, the country's identity. And even and sport, I mean, we use sport often if, uh, you know, the rugby team wins the World Cup, it becomes um, something that in, the whole country embraces and becomes part of our collective identity. But a, a really important part of, um, you know, this, that psyche of a country really is also the things that makes people very angry, collectively very, very angry. And 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 when one look um, from a research point of view in a sort of post-Second World War um, in Africa, when, uh, when many countries became independent, and, and normally what happens with the... Um, when national uh, psychologists and uh, of okay psyche sorry in, in in these countries became used to state failure, poor leadership, corruption, um, you know that those are the periods that we saw the decline in many many countries. So you you know once um, um, collectively societies accept um, state failure, lack of public services corruption, poor leadership, it then becomes entrenched um, in the national psyche. And, you know, your ordinary citizen accepts and say, well, actually, you know, in our country, leaders are corrupt. Governments don't work. Trains don't, will never be on time. This is just our country, how our country is. So that then becomes then the national psyche, and it becomes then very difficult um, to reverse decline in a country. Well, if we look at our past, why aren't we more angry? Why are South Africa accepting this? Are we like the frog in the boiling water and it's getting warmer and we just sort of adapt to the to the heat on us? I mean, that I think is certainly a, a really intriguing question. Why are we not? We certainly are not angry enough. Um, of, we are angry, but we don't express the anger um, against the people responsible for all of our troubles. Um, if it's the government's, we, you know, what has been happening, we see, you know, communities and citizens often scapegoat others. Either there's a scapegoating, either a blaming of the past, you know, for current government and leadership failures, or there's a blaming of other groups, um, foreigners, that's where we've seen you know, the, um, um, xenophobia. Then there's often also, you know, blaming other communities, you know, within our society. Um, rather than actually mobilizing the anger against government and against um, leaders. And secondly, I mean, a really important, in a democracy, um, it's it's important part of a society, like our society, our, the, the democratic aspect of our national psyche. And, and one of the most important parts of democracy is when people are angry, is... And, to turn that anger into voting in one way or the other. But in the South African context, what we've been seeing uh, um, the last couple of years, so people are angry, but then they, instead of using their vote um, to channel their anger, they either, you know, we've got large numbers of people um, stay at home, they won't, they won't vote. And and that is why we say, I mean, if the you know the majority, the last national elections, if the people who stayed home would have voted for any other party, that party would have won. Um, or people would say, well, actually, um, 
if they support the ANC or say another party is a loyal and the ANC um, um, doesn't perform, they would say, well, I can't vote for another party because the other parties I can't associate uh, uh, with another party. So again, it really is almost a waste uh, of, of anger. Um, and it then continues the decline by staying at home or not voting for another party um, that one may not like or not associated with, but in order to hold one's own party and leaders who are failing accountable, um, you know, one continues um, the decline, the disintegration um, and the rot. The one thing people are worried about when we say we're not angry enough and we should mobilize and people are say. Yeah, but every time that happens, you can have big marches and stuff. Schools get broken down, you know, get burned down. So, so how do you channel that anger that it doesn't lead to violence, but it leads to action? And and again, yes, um, what we've seen sadly the last couple of years is that um, our psyche seems, our national psyche, you know, seems to approve um, destructive anger. So. Um, so, um, you, you know, people often protest against corruption or, 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 municip- or f- f- lack of government delivery uh, by, this, you know, destroying public assets, roads, um, um, you know, buildings, burning down libraries, uh, and so on. So, and that has become acceptable. And again, that's, you know, the negative way of looking at our na- national psyche, you, you know, negativity of accepting that if there's a grievance and a problem and there's a protest that um, burning down public assets and communal assets has become acceptable. So again, it's a wrong channeling of our anger. Um, so, you know, so as I said at the beginning, um, we are angry, um, but we're not angry enough against the right people and against the right institutions. And then our anger, our, our anger is expressed negatively in the wrong way. Um, you know, either during a protest, service, you know, public service delivery protests, burning public um, infrastructure, public assets and communal assets, or um, blaming foreigners um, for our problems, um, or blaming other communities for our problems, or blaming the past. So, you know, while doing that, um, those who are responsible, our elected government that is supposed to deliver, they go scot free. Well, it seems that a change of government is what we need, and it seems that you, you are also th- um, pointing to that direction. Um, we, I've, I've been wondering about this. The ANC seems to be more confident now. It will get the f- more than 50% uh, percent of the vote. And I recently spoke to a senior AN official, ANC official who said, oh, you know what, we're going to increase the grants or make it more permanent. We're going to suddenly do a lot. We're going to solve a bit of the electricity problems. Will, is the national psyche to such that we believe when politicians suddenly say, okay, no, 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 we're going to save you? You know, heartbreakingly, many um, South Africans, um, because, you know, um, our situation is, or, uh, is so desperate. So when ANC leaders and the ANC government promise uh, make promises and new promises, even if they failed in the past, people embrace this out of desperation. And even, you know, these days, uh, our national psyche, we even accept often, um, you know, when services are just delivered, even, you know, really not spectacularly, but, you know, just um, even if it's me- mediocre, as long as it is delivered, we accept that because, y- you know, of experience of non-delivery. So we accept s- substandard um, public services. And, and sadly, that has become also now part of our, our psyche, accepting it. And we're accepting promise, promises and so on. I'll just use you, I mean, I'll, 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 I'll use an example. Um, you know, we've having had power outages and President Sir Ramaphosa early in the year appointed the electricity minister. And society accepts that. Um, you know, knowing full well there's a problem is not with the electricity minister to, uh, uh, um, or appointing another person, um, another minister. It, it, you know, our real issue is to deal with, a, to deal with the corruption and the incompetence um, at the entity um, itself and cleaning it up 
Um, you know, dealing with a police that's ineffective and has also been captured, dealing with a criminal mafias who are linked to the ANC, dealing with all of the vested interests in the ANC that's benefiting um, um, from ESCOM and don't and and and, and are very happy um, for uh, low setting to continue because they benefiting out of it and that really is what needs to happen. So as a society, you know, people were so excited. Uh, you know, there's a president point the electricity minister was like a placebo um, and so on, but people accepted that. So how do we change this dominant na na um, national psyche? Because you've talked about in Africa, that's what happened. You know, g g governments, uh, communities started accepting, we corrupt. And if, if, if that's the label that South Africa now has, is there a way to change that, S the story of South Africa? You know, it's, it, it's very important to, because we need to change our story and we need to change our identity and our national psyche. It is, it's, it's absolutely critical that we do that. And one of the ways we can do that is by, you know, voting another party into power or a coalition. And, and that's going to be important because so far our psyche, our national psyche has also become used to the ANC being in power. And the ANC has been in power now for three decades. So we are now even used to the ANC. Um, so it is almost like, as I say, that failure route and failure model in other African countries and other, obviously other developing countries also where the, you know, society allow one party, even though the party fail, to stay in power based on the past or based on ethnic solidarity or color solidarity or group um, solidarity uh, uh, and so on. And that becomes part of the national uh, no, psyche. Um, the same party gets recycled and recycled um, in, in power and then the corruption get recycled, failure uh, get recycled and you know, infrastructure collab uh, collapse get worse. So it's going to be absolutely important as a society and as citizens um, next year at a national election, break from the old, from, you know, the existing very negative um, um, failure and mentality and, and psychology that, um, and, and psyche that we have as a country. Break from that, make a clean break by voting for other parties, even if they don't agree 100% with other parties. Because, you, you, you know, it's, it's very important from a democratic point of view no, one will never be able to agree with everything a political party stands for. So uh, it is absolutely crucial, firstly, from a democratic point of view, consolidation of democracy in South Africa, that there is a break at the national level that we have another party governing. It is absolutely important, um, you, you know, to, to consolidate our, our democracy. And it's important, obviously, also for our, our psyche that there's another party and that we, we the idea of change and, and, and kicking out um, the parties that uh, the, the ANC or any party that is ineffective, that's uncaring, and it doesn't deliver. It's very, very important. Um, but it's also related to this very, very important that we that ordinary citizens understand that um, you know a a party that they support should not be like supporting a um, a soccer team, for example, or a rugby team or the church. So you know, so that um, psyche of linking a political party that wants support as or, or turning it. If, into as if it's a, um, a sports club that one supports for life or church that one supports for life. So we've got into that psyche, national psyche as a country. So many people support the ASU or support other, say, opposition parties also, as if they are, um, you know, the church or uh, a soccer club or a rugby club that you have to support through thick and thin, no matter what happens. So we also have to break out of that part, uh, you know, that way of looking um, at, at things in the country. Well, what about the ANC who thinks it should always rule? They always think like they have this almost divine right to rule. How do you change that perception that, listen, guys, you, you're going to be voted out. Don't think you're going to rule forever. Absolutely. We can see it already. Um, although the party is failing in government, there is an entitlement among its leaders 
the entitlement that because it was a leading force during the fight um, against apartheid, and because of that, you know, you know, based on the past, that they entitled to rule forever. That's, you know, when former President Jacob Zuma was in power, he said the ANC will rule until Jesus comes. Um, uh, and so, so entitlement. And unfortunately, many members and supporters and voters of the ANC also believe that. So, you know, in their psyche, uh, for them, they also um, buy into that psyche of the ANC will be there until Jesus comes. So we have to break that. That has to be, uh, uh, you, you know, that the ANC has to be outvoted. Now, we, we've seen it, at least the good thing is, at a local government level, the last couple of elections, most of our municipalities across the country are now dominated by non-ANC governments within coalition. And we even have some places where civil society groups, like non-political parties, are actually in charge. Um of municipalities. So that's a very important break to our you know, to our psyche, our national psyche, to the idea that one party can rule forever, is entitled to rule forever. We already seeing so you know the beginning of the end of that um part of our psyche that we've developed the last thirty years at, at a local government level, obviously not yet um at a national level, but it's it's a really, really positive um development. So there's sparks of po positivity in terms of changing the psyche. Absolutely, absolutely, and 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 you, you know, country psyches should also not be seen as permanent. Although obviously many in many countries, you know, um, failure becomes almost permanent. I mean, if you look at it, um, you know, um, some African, many African countries are now uh, have now been independent for more than sixty years. You know, getting to almost a hundred years. And um, in those societies that have been failed, that have failed, is almost that they have had, um, they've embraced for many, for third and fourth and fifth generations, um, it's almost a failure psychosis, you know, acceptance that um, failure is part of their country, that um, bad leaders are part of it, or that... Um, Strong leaders, but strong leaders in a negative way. Strong leaders, like say a, a, a Museveni or Robert uh, 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 Mugabe, leaders who who are angry and and shout at enemies, um, but don't deliver, and then they they enrich themselves and they use populist um, rhetoric and they nationalistic. So you know, many Af African societies accept those leaders um, as. Um, you know, the way the country votes, how the country, you know, who should be supported. And, you know, so, and that becomes then a failed way of looking um, at things um, um, and so on. Um, so, I mean, coming back um, to a South African context, um, it's also going to be very important if we break, in, in order to break um, a national psyche of failure, as that we have to begin to look at different kinds of leaders. Um, so instead of leaders um, who base their rhetoric on the past or leaders who mobilize based on enemies or on blaming others or leaders who are victims or leaders who are macho or leaders of violence because, you know, collectively... Mm -hmm. Um, often, you, you know, people see leaders who use violent rhetoric, who attack others, who, who are macho, who are toxic, um, uh, or exposed um, toxic masculinity, or who are not vulnerable, who are not in tune with their emotions, are, are seen as strong leaders in a national psyche. Um, but what we now need as a country going forward, we need leaders who are much more in tune with himself, uh, with their own emotions, that can govern their own um, themselves, you know, whether the emotions um, um, and, and so on. And it could also be that are also um, are strong enough to be vulnerable um, and, and take responsibility and accountability and don't blame stuff. And don't um, you, you, um, trade on, be, on, on, on being a victim, and who are open to evidence-based policies, and and also who are inclusive, um, and not only governing 
for their own constituencies, for their own color, um, for their own language, but governing in the interest of every South African. Professor William Govander, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.